video. Oh, hold on. Let me intro. So, uh, I have studied this man's work so much that I feel like saying this is my friend, Jimmy. It, but we're all going to call him Professor Corsetti. All right. Uh, I feel like there's information in this world that don't stop. Don't stop digging. And you need to know. You need to learn and, and realize that what we thought was real may not exactly be real. Um, and he's one of the biggest reasons why things started to piece together for me. So I wanted to introduce him to you. All right. Hey, YouTube. Let's go. Video, I'm going to share several astonishing new details that have come to it. light involving the topic of the lost ancient city of Atlantis and the Eye of the Sahara, which in just the last few years has taken the internet by storm as this unbelievably bizarre structure just so happens to match a dozen of the most significant... I want to pause right here. There's going to be a couple places where I pause. One, just so everyone can soak it all in, and, and two, where I'm going to speak, right? Uh, I'm going to try to speak a lot less because I'm a little sick. You know, we're going to ignore that. But this is just uncanny. This this is crazy because where where this is. If I could pull up a bigger map right now, I would. Similarities to Plato's description of the famed lost capital city of Atlantis. But perhaps the only thing stranger than these striking comparisons is the fact that the Rishat structure itself remains a genuine scientific mystery that continues to confound scientists to this day, as this one-of-a-kind geological feature is like no other place found anywhere else on Earth and has remained essentially hidden and largely unknown within the remote western... Boom. That's a good place to pause right here. This is very important because on this side is the Atlantic Ocean, right? This is the Atlas Mountain Range right here. So all of that's very important. In Sahara Desert of Mauritania, which only makes its distinctive nature that much more curious when you consider that so few people have still never seen or heard of it before, even including the most curious and inquisitive minds around. But let me ask you this, Joe, real quick. When you saw my video, was Jimmy's that the work. very first time you had ever seen this thing yes. before? Yes, yeah. That's the thing. And that is the thing, because if nothing thing. else, this extraordinarily unique this anomaly should be included on the list of natural wonders of the world. But Absolutely. nevertheless, when you see the new lines of evidence that I'm going to share in this video, it will become exceedingly apparent that the fittingly named Eye of the Sahara is by far the most likely location for the lost capital city of Atlantis. And not only that, these new details will likely make those who previously thought that this site could not possibly be the location of Atlantis think again. So with all of that said, let me start off by sharing something particularly interesting. It is widely known that the ancient Rome... This is another thing I want to talk about, boy. Okay, so one, I consider history to be the greatest movie never made, okay? Uh, if we were to be able to sit down and cinematically watch all of this unfold, I guarantee we would all be amazed. But the fact that Rome started here, started as this little village coming together, and as they went out and they expanded up this way and out, they just kept taking the best warriors, some of the women, this and the third, and they built all of this within 600 years. They said Rome was founded in, in like six, they'll say 650 BC to 750 BC, but um, to build all of this in 600 years is insane. Romans were renowned for documenting insane. everything as the Caesars went to profound extent to accumulate knowledge. And Wait, sorry, quick, quick pause for me. Hispania, Britannia. And information from every location mm. their vast empire ventured. So I have to admit that I was quite surprised to learn of someone by the name of Pomponius Maia, who was the Romans' first geographer dating back to some 2,000 years ago, and had created a sophisticated map of the known world at that time, titled The Habitable World of Pomponius Maia. So all right, all right. It's the last time pausing for like two minutes of the video, right? What made me pause is seeing India up here like connected to everything. <clears throat> Something that up until recently, I had never seen or heard of before. And real quick, 
Let's not confuse this map with the ancient Greek historian Herodotus' map of the known world of 2,500 years ago, which I shared in one of my prior videos on this topic. Yeah. A map that curiously listed Atlantes in the same location of the Rishat. However, the original source of this map is a bit of a mystery, as modern historians claim that Herodotus is not known to have ever created an actual map and have thus put its origins into question. So, putting that map aside, let's focus on this verifiably authentic 2,000-year-old map that has also annotated something very interesting in the Western Sahara Desert. First, notice that this map is oriented to the east in its original form, hmm. so let me go ahead and flip mm -hmm. it to a north-south facing orientation so we can gain our bearing. And the features of Europe, West Asia, and North Africa become apparent. So let's now focus yeah. our attention to what is in the northwest region of the Sahara and observe what it annotates here. Atlantia, or Atlantia, which more... Hey, you still have Mori. Huh. Huh. Because the Mauritanian people are right next to Atlantis. Well, what used to be Atlantis. Less appears as Atlanteans, and again, in the same geographical region of the Rishat structure, mm -hmm. which, like I've shared in my prior videos, just so happens to coincidentally match so many precise details that Plato described of Atlantis, including that the capital city was famously said to be made up of concentric circles, specifically three rings of water and two of land, which correctly matches the Rishat with water in it. Three rings of water. Plato, you feel me? This whole tale of Atlantis and Atlantis being underwater is a big game of telephone. Water and two of land, which correctly matches the Rishat with water in it, which it certainly did, as I will prove to you with hard scientific data in just a moment. But the circular ring city was also said to have an opening to the sea at the south, which not only matches the southerly opening of the Rishat anomaly, but it even has existing evidence of a flow of salt water that is still visible to this day, which, and again, I will prove with hard scientific evidence shortly, but Atlantis was also said to be surrounded by a large rectangular plain, which is another arguable similarity that extends for hundreds of miles on both sides of the Rishat. But furthermore, Atlantis was said to be made of black, red, and white color stones, which is another specifically unique similarity that matches the geological nature of the Rishat. And speaking of uniquely specific geological features, this next detail that I recently learned of blew me away, as there is English literature from the year 1851 on the preliminary... Whoa, hold on. Preliminary? He's gonna read it anyway. On the resources of ancient Mauritania. Or the territory of Western, ooh, I ain't reading that, with observations on Christianity and the promotion of civilization. This, that's, that's got to be racist. <laughs> that's got to be racist somewhere. And the suppression of slavery. Preliminary treaties of resources of ancient Mauritania, which describes the country as having gold in considerable quantities, and even specifically... They say gold dust. ...states, uh, and I quote that it is a well-authenticated fact that previous to the discovery of America, okay. Europe was supplied to a great extent with gold from Mauritania. How have I never heard of this before? And get this, Mauritania Maybe. was so rich in gold that several Mansa hundred Musa. years ago, a king by the name of Mansa Musa of the Mali Empire, which was a region of Africa that includes modern-day Mauritania, was said to have been the richest man in all of human history so rich that he far exceeds the richest billionaires alive today. Wow. In fact, he owned gold mines which account for more than half of the world's supply of gold today. Yeah. And by the way, something else you'll find interesting related to that 1851 treaties of ancient Mauritanian resources is that it describes ancient Mauritania of having an abundance of elephant ivory, which is a significant detail considering that Atlantis was said to have numerous elephants on the island. And so it's worth mentioning that there is also existing cave art depicting elephants in the area around the Rishat as well, as wow. I've shared previously. That's but huge. I digress because another highly specific feature of Atlantis was that its center island which was described as being geothermal in nature. Hold on. I don't feel like he's going to read this. The god Poseidon found no difficulty in making special arrangements for the center island, bringing up two springs of water from beneath the earth, one of warm water, the other of cold. 
Huh. And supposedly Poseidon was the father of Atlas. Nature. So. And that it was said to have hot springs as well as springs of cold, fresh water. Which is a reason why some have dismissed the dry, barren Rishot structure as a possibility for Atlantis. So, I imagine that many will find it very interesting to learn that there is a little-known study of the Rishot structure dating back to the late 1990s, which describes the Rishot as being a hydrothermal complex. Well, hot springs themselves are the very definition of a hydrothermal anomaly. And the fact that there is an actual scientific study corroborating this uniquely specific oh. characteristic is wow. significant in itself because although the Rishot may be a dry, barren place today, we must imagine what a different landscape this region was some 11 to 12,000 years ago at the time of Atlantis. Wow. And speaking of 11 to 12,000 years ago, this is the part in the video where things get crazier and will continue to do so through the rest of the video. Because another key aspect is that Atlantis was described as having impressive mountains to the north. So, assuming that the cliffs of the Adra Highlands don't already meet that description, there is likewise a ma oh, massive damn. mountain chain Missed to it. the north called the Atlas Mountains. There Hold is likewise... Alright. Wow, just to soak it in. Because this isn't really traveled nor explored by many people. Was a massive mountain chain to the north called the Atlas Mountains, which were aptly named after the first known king of Mauritania, who get this. Hold on. I can't keep pausing. I'm sorry. This just so happens to share the same exact name of the very first king of Atlantis, who was also named Atlas. Gee, what a coincidence. But it only gets more bizarre from here because not only was the city of Atlantis <clears throat> described as having mountains located to the north, but also said to have rivers. So get this. Recent scientific studies have confirmed an ancient river called the Taman Reset that flowed from the Atlas Mountains and winded some 500 kilometers all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, directly in the path of the Eye of the Sahara. And if that isn't fascinating enough, just look at the date of when that river is known to have existed. 11,700 years ago, precisely within the time frame of when Atlantis was said to have been destroyed. Make no mistake, the entire region of the Sahara looked Whoa. completely different at that time compared to what we see today. And the next few details that I'm going to share may wow. very well blow your mind. Already because did. like I've shared in multiple prior videos, there is tremendous evidence of vast water erosion throughout the Sahara Desert, which is so extreme that it can be clearly observed from space via satellite imagery. Make no mistake, this is not wind erosion and has been confirmed to be wow. catastrophic <clears throat> levels of water it. erosion by subject matter experts, including even the respected Randall Carlson himself. You and the overwhelmingly apparent water striations that rip right through the Rishot structure all the way to the Atlantic. Whoa. Whoa. This used to be giant bodies of water that went around oh, oh Ocean man are evident for all who have eyes to see and upon further study oh, it man. looks as if an unimaginably massive force of water had blasted its way from the mediterranean sea through north africa creating a path that just so happens to be at all the lowest elevational points through the sahara just as water would naturally direct itself mm. and this is the part where things get really nuts because there is a little known yet unbelievably fascinating scientific study that revealed a gigantic under ocean seafloor slide off the coast of Mauritania and is referred to as the Mauritanian slide and dates back to like approximately 11,000 years ago, give or take, and was, <clears throat> in this, believed to have been created by a tsunami. A tsunami that, given the very nature of its shape, would have originated from the east, as you can see from the debris field's widest point, and pushed westward to where the, the debris field eventually becomes more narrow. Hmm. But not only that, this massive seafloor slide is located directly in front of the Rishot's path, as you can see from the reference locations on the study when compared to the respective locations on planet Earth. And when I say that this seafloor slide is massive, that, observe yeah. the legend in the lower right. From my own estimation, it is 300 kilometers or nearly 200 miles wide from east to west, 
and nearly 150 kilometers or 100 miles wide when measured from north to south. To put that east-west measurement into perspective, the debris field generated by this tsunami is more than 25% wider than the maximum width of Florida's peninsula. Another comparison is that it's virtually the same distance from Washington, D.C. to New York City. So the big question becomes, what on earth happened to send a biblical-sized tsunami, so to speak, that's, through North Africa crazy. in the approximate neighborhood of 11,000 years ago? And let's be real. If the Rishad structure is indeed the actual location for the lost city, the remains of it would be found in the area of this debris field, which, by the way, is stacked layer of the found in the area indeed the actual location for the lost city. The remains of it would be found in the area of this debris field, which, by the way, is stacked layer of debris sediment and is at least a couple thousand meters or more than a mile deep. This entire area needs to be scanned with LIDAR and even ASAP. drilled for examination. ASAP. Now, let me keep going because this seafloor slide is not the only piece of evidence that suggests that the ocean bulldozed its way through the Sahara at the time of Atlantis, as the next detail I'm going to share is extremely significant. And I must first preface it by sharing a highly important detail that I've mentioned in prior videos, which is that the last time the Sahara was said to be under the ocean was at the time of the Trans-Saharan Seaway, which is estimated to have existed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Did some 56 to 66 million years ago, essentially all the way back to the time of the dinosaurs. And you can distinguish the regions of the Sahara where this seaway is known to have once flowed, but here's the thing. You can also clearly observe that this seaway is not mm. annotated to have went west over the Rishat. Rather, it went south, which is why I suggest that something else happened, something separate and far more recently that has somehow eluded scientists and wow. researchers. No. And here no. is the smoking gun evidence which proves it. Emikusi is the Sahara's largest volcano, reaching a height of 11,300 feet or more than 3,400 meters, and is dated to be 2 million years old. And the last known lava flow occurred at the south end of Emikusi's caldera in the neighborhood of 12,000 years ago, give or take. And this is the part that is unbelievably significant, because notice how the volcano is positioned directly along the clear path of catastrophic water erosion, just as we see as the wrist shot. You can literally see the line of the path that the water took, and which clearly eroded and erased portions of that 12,000-year-old lava flow which means that the flooding would have had to have happened after that volcanic activity. Whether it be 12,000 years ago or 2 million years ago at the birth of this volcano, this is hard evidence that the ocean blasted its way through the Sahara far more recently than 56 to 66 million years ago that's been claimed. And the evidence does not stop there. Because this white blemish within Emikusi's caldera at 11,000 plus feet in elevation is salt. not snow. It's salt. Salt that is said to be the remains of an ancient lake that disappeared just thousands of years ago. And not only that, small aquatic life, including gastropods, which consists of snails, slugs, limpets, uh, and other small little creatures, have been found within the caldera and have been radiocarbon dated to some 14 to 15,000 years ago. How First of all, side note, and this is a super side note for all my, my fellows that play Call of Duty and Call of Duty zombies and everything. Activision, whoever makes this game, y'all gotta, y'all better come out with the secrets because you're sitting on them. Now you may not, you may get away with it because a lot of people don't know what you're doing and what you're putting in video games, but come up off them secrets, my boy. How did they get there okay. and where did that salt come from? Because make no mistake, this salt water would obviously had to have come after this volcano's eruption, certainly not before. So let me now take you back to the Rishot structure wow. so I can share one of the <clears throat> wow. most significant details of this video, as it will prove that seawater was indeed inside the Rishot at the exact time of Atlantis. Just as I've shared in other videos, all these white blemishes are indeed salt. In fact, the entire region oh, around wow. the Rishot in Mauritania itself is known for vast amounts of salt that are mined and exported to this day. And when you consider that all the areas in and around the Rishot with these concentrations of salt also happen to be in the areas of the lowest elevation, 
it seems reasonable to conclude that seawater had once settled and evaporated here. Mm -hmm. And this next part is the smoking gun evidence, as I have found another little known study that shares how it's aquatic in life, including mollusks, which by the way, examples of mollusks include oysters, clams, mussels, squid, and even octopus, existed in the brackish waters within the wrist shot and have dates ranging from 15,000 to 7,700 years ago, which proves that the Rishot was consumed with water at the very time oh, wow. of when Atlantis was said to have been destroyed 11,600 years ago. Let that sink in for a moment as the implications are massive. And okay, hold on, hold on. Because one thing that almost explains why it was seen as underwater because the water would run along the sides and Atlantis is technically sitting in here, right? So there's literally running water <laughs> going around the city or country. I don't know. It was very, pretty big, right? That's incredible. That alone, that alone is incredible. And let me just say, if everything I've shared so far isn't compelling enough, wait until you hear these next several arguments. First, consider that the story of Atlantis actually originates from the ancient Egyptians who claimed- Hold on, now I want to jump in front of this one too. This is, this is exactly why we're playing this video. Because when it comes to Atlantis, it is all of our human civilizations put together. We all owe them a thank you and, and yada, yada, yada. Because the Egyptians learned from the Atlanteans the Greeks and the Romans learn from the Egyptians and everybody else learned from the Greeks and the Romans. So in order for us to learn what it means to be human and what we're doing here on this planet, it wouldn't be important to learn about Atlantis. I'm just saying. And this is just the start of your journey. That they were colonists and the It'll remaining survivors of a civilization that was destroyed in a cataclysm. And this is where the legend of Atlantis comes from, which is something that most people are not aware of. And so when you consider this next remarkable fact that was only discovered not long ago is that the Sahara was a lush green tropical landscape at the time of mm. Atlantis. Shout out to PBS. And considering that Atlantis was said to be abundant in exotic fruits and vegetation and had lush hanging gardens, when you piece together the fact that the Sahara was a known lush tropical environment at that time only further adds to these possible similarities. And listen to this. The Green Sahara existed up until approximately 5,000 years ago when it shifted to the barren desert we know it for today. However, some estimates state that this transition may have happened as recently as 4,500 years ago, which is a curious time frame as it precisely coincides with the estimated date for when the pyramids of Giza were constructed some 4,500 years ago. And that brings me to another curious observation which is that the notable Egyptian Eye of Horus is uncannily similar to the Eye of the Sahara when observed from altitude. Of course, many will consider this comparison to be a stretch. However, mm. it certainly has a thought-provoking resemblance, it does. does it not? But that aside, and although the Sahara Desert initially seems like the least likely place that you'd find the lost city of Atlantis, it actually makes a lot of sense when you piece together other key details. For example, Atlantis was said to be busy all day and all night, rich in trade, and with people speaking languages from all over. So ask yourself, does it really make sense to suggest that a city so vastly consisting of travel and trade would be located in, in the, the middle, middle of, of a ocean. vast, dangerous ocean? Yeah. I mean, would other less advanced seafaring civilizations venture out to the middle of the ocean to hit up a local market to trade for ripe wow. fruit, spices, and vegetables? Or is it far more likely that based on all the new scientific data that we have, that the region of North Africa, which we now know was connected by a diverse, massive network of rivers, which of course are conducive for travel. Wouldn't that be more feasible? I mean, after all, new studies involving lost human civilizations of the Sahara have concluded exactly that. And something else worth mentioning is that Atlantis was an empire said to be made up of 10 kingdoms, and I would not be surprised if any of the other nine that made up this empire would be found in the island chains found in this region, including the submerged islands such as the Azores. I am simply focusing on the capital city, which was said to be made up of concentric circles, and the Eye of the Sahara is the one location that matches that highly specific characteristic wow. and nearly a dozen others. Heck, even the names are still the same. Now, if everything I've shared so far isn't compelling enough, names are still... Mm. Oh yeah, that's a big one, because the Mauritanians are huge in astronomy. Mm. 
This is the same tail as Atlantis. Huh. Huh. The same. Now, if everything I've shared so far isn't compelling enough, the next few details will hit the nail into the coffin that the Eye of the Sahara is by far the most likely location for the lost capital city of Atlantis. Because many have argued that since the Rishat structure is a, quote, natural formation, it could not possibly be the location since, after all, Atlantis was created by the god Poseidon. But when you consider that Poseidon was the god of the sea, water, horses, and earthquakes, the Greek word Poseidon itself translates to, quote, husband of the earth or lord of the earth. It seems to me that this is a lost in translation phrase that is meant to describe what we call today Mother Nature, which, if you ask me, would of course make the most sense. But besides that, we also know that humans have built upon the most unique natural formation wow. since the beginning of time and still do to this day. Wow. Furthermore, people will also say that Plato stated that Atlantis was located, quote, west of the Pillars of Hercules, which we now know today as the Strait of Gibraltar, which is why many suggest that Atlantis, which... We Atlantic Ocean? We now know today as the Strait of Gibraltar, which is why many suggest that Atlantis would most likely be found in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. However, Plato did not say west. He actually said in front of. And the first thing you should know is that when you exit the Strait of Gibraltar, the current takes you directly south towards the Rishat. But furthermore, assuming that a distant past civilization even had adequate seafaring vessels that could survive the open oceans, you had essentially three choices of travel when leaving the Straits. You either follow the coast to the right, follow the coast to the left, or go straight into the unknown, endless ocean horizon at your own peril. So here is something interesting to think about. If you traveled along the coast with Africa to the left, you would journey west-southwest for more than 1,200 miles before rounding Africa's western Sahara coastline. To put that distance into perspective, that is equivalent from New York City to Lincoln, Nebraska. That is no little trip. I, I point that out because it's not unreasonable to say that the Rishat structure is in front of the Straits when you travel by boat. But regardless, Plato never said west. And by the way, another detail people get caught up on is mm. that Plato stated that Atlantis sank beneath the waves, which is why many have long assumed that Atlantis would be at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. However, Plato also described that the destructed area of Atlantis following the cataclysm consisted of reeds of grass and that the area was no longer navigable by ship as it was blocked by a barrier of mud. Well, that does not indicate anything about being at the bottom of the ocean. No. Rather, he is essentially describing reed-filled salt marshes that are known to exist in shallow coastal regions. And although the Rishat is now some 1,200 feet above sea level, we know that that, of course, was not always the case, considering that the sea life once existed in the Rishat some 11 to 12,000 years ago. But this is why it is worth discussing the geological phenomenon known as isostatic response, or glacial isostatic adjustment which describes that when ice melts, the significant reduction in weight causes the land to lift back up, but subsequently causes land in other areas to decrease, which is the likely explanation for the sunken Azor Islands, as it's been suggested that the melted North American ice shelf caused that land to lift and subsequently caused the land in the Atlantic Ocean to sink. But if mm. that is indeed the case, would that not potentially have caused North Africa to lift? I don't know, but another enthralling detail that goes along these lines is to note that the antipode of the Rishat structure today, and by the way, if you're not familiar, an antipode is a location that is directly opposite of another location on Thank our you. globe. So get this, the antipode of Mauritania is Zealandia, a scientifically confirmed sunken continent that was only discovered in 2017. And considering that many have theorized that what happens on one side of the Earth could potentially affect the location directly on the other side, this detail is worthy of discussion. And by the way, let me give a quick shout out to my great friend Nikki of the Nikki Anna Jones YouTube podcast channel for sharing this highly thought-provoking detail with me. Definitely go to her channel and hit Good the subscribe shit, button as she is completely awesome. Her personality and inquisitive mindset are infectious, and I know that you'll just love her. Now, one last final yet important <clears throat> argument to be made related to the Rishat Atlantis theory is that many will say that the measurements provided by Plato for the size of the capital city make the Rishat far too large. 
However, I disagree and would argue that the true measurements would surely have been lost in translation over the course of some 12,000 years and through the numerous changes of language that would have occurred, occurred during the passing of that prolonged time. I mean, it's not like anyone today speaks Latin, which was once a common language, and heck, even the modern English- It was the name of their people, the Latins or Latines. I don't know how y'all want to get down on that, but it was the name of their people. English language itself is only 500 years old and derives from Old English, which is quite a bit different, and in that in itself is only 1,500 years old. Make no mistake, languages are constantly changing, and keeping up with measurements, I would argue, could be a yeah. very difficult challenge, especially over 12,000 years. Agreed. And Solon went out of his way to describe this issue of interpretation when he stated that he would endeavor to the best of his ability to describe the specifics of Atlantis. And considering that Atlantis was said to be busy all day and all night, it's fair to say that the local population would have had to have been in the millions, just as we find in other busy cities throughout the world today. True. So the city of Atlantis would have had to have been large enough to inhabit a sizable population. I mean, let's note that modern metropolitan areas are very comparable to the size of the Rishot. For example, the Paris metro area is well over 20 miles from one side to the other. And the same can be said for modern day Cairo. The reality is that lost in translation is a very real thing because even the ancient Greek word used by Plato to use and describe the word island of Atlantis was the word nesos, which when you research the origins of that word, you find that it has five different translations, which include not just the word island, but promontory, peninsula, coast, and even describes land within a continent that is surrounded by lakes, rivers, or streams, which would be a completely appropriate word to describe the Rishot structure at that time. When you add all of these details that I've shared throughout this video together, I'd say that the Pomponius Maya map is probably the least compelling part, as it may just be talking about the Atlas people who lived under the, the ancient Mauritanian king of the same name. At least that's how some will come to dismiss this. But then again, it seems to me that the very name Atlas was carried down and reused, just as people do with names today. All I know is that people. the numerous details shared in this video are too astounding to be ignored. And Atlantis or not, whether it ever existed or whether or not the Rishot structure would be the long lost location, if nothing else, like I said earlier, the Rishot structure should be listed on Natural Wonders of the World. And not only that, the very nature of the Sahara Desert having clear evidence that the ocean blasted over it far more recently than 56 to 66 million years ago should be a topic that is front and center among researchers, scientists, climate scientists, and everybody. Geologists, this is significant. So I know some people will dismiss the possibility of Atlantis and ridicule the Rishot theory. Great. But like, we need to talk about the science aspect of this and what the heck happened to the Sahara Desert. Now, I must share something that I am incredibly excited about, which is that I will be giving a live presentation next June in Asheville, North Carolina, alongside nice. legends including Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson, Ben from Uncharted X, Johanna James. Bro, first of all, if you don't know anybody up here, just know they are smart as hell, especially this man right here. <laughs> and nearly a <laughs> dozen other hell. brilliant scientists and researchers at the first annual Cosmic Summit conference created by George Howard of the Cosmic Tusk. This two-day event will discuss the evidence of the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe that we believe reset ancient human civilizations. They and did. this will give you an opportunity to come rub shoulders with us and take part in discussing fascinating topics with other like-minded people. However, this event will also be available to be streamed through HowTube. Uh, I'll include links for both websites down below. But I'm very excited about this. I can't wait for it. I'm gonna be giving a very interesting presentation. I have long desired to give in-person live presentations. It's something I used to do in a prior career. So that being said, I'm gonna close this up, leave a comment, hit the like button and subscribe. But my name is Jimmy Corsetti. My channel is called Bright Insight. And stay tuned for many more videos to come. Take care, everybody. Fucking perfect. Thanks, Jimmy. Awesome.